drink clean water and live free from the pollution that fuels the climate crisis. And the freedom that unlocks all the others, the freedom to vote. With this election, we finally have the opportunity to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and the Freedom to Vote Act. They should be very afraid of this woman. Very afraid. And anyone who's telling you that she's a moron, playing those clips that I played for years on Fox of her stumbling through her school bus talk or trying to explain where Ukraine is, you know, and dismissing her as a buffoon. She's not a buffoon. She's a demagogue. She's actually surprisingly slick and composed, which makes her a lot scarier. She's the female Gavin Newsom. They're from the same state. They didn't win any elections. It's a one-party state. They were chosen by the unions in California and installed in those jobs. There is no democracy in California. It's fake. And anyone from there can tell you that. This woman is a product of machine politics in a one-party state. That's her attitude. And she's absolutely capable of winning. That's that's the takeaway from this, for me. She's I, I, capable of winning. I, I think she's capable of being carried across the finish yes, line. Yes, that's right. And, you know, they have a system in place to manipulate voting and all that. And, and uh, they think, and maybe they're right, that they've dumbed down America enough that this, what they're putting out there, and all this symbolism and all the celebrities are with us, and, and people that are normal, let's call them weird. That's another little, their, their mind trick of, you know, they're making normal behavior seem weird, and they're the normal people. Yeah, if that Walls guy is calling anyone weird, I get the strongest creepy vibes off that guy. Obviously. Yeah, <laughs> obvi obviously. Obviously, that guy's a freak, and it, I can just smell it. Anyway, if he's calling anyone weird, but the point is, I think anyone running against this woman should take her seriously, should think very carefully about how to oppose and expose her, and not imagine that she's going to be easily spanked in a debate. You follow elections closer and longer than I have. That they're, Have elections always been this focused on hey, you should like this person, you should dislike this person, rather than a conversation that's devoid of policy conversation. No, and no, not at all. And not at all. And I'm, not, I'm hardly an expert on elections. I usually call them wrong. So, But with that caveat, I've certainly been around them my whole life. I mean, I was at Reagan's last rally in 1980 at the Del Mar Racetrack. Um, so yeah, I've been to a lot of political events. And no, I mean, up until back when it was a functioning, well-educated country, um, politicians did. I mean, Fritz Mondale in 84 made you know real, a real case for his tax program, for example. You know, even Mike Dukakis um, in 88, they, Bill Clinton made policy arguments like, vote for me and you'll get this. And here's how I'm going to give it to you. I, don't, I didn't believe them, but he made those arguments. This is just slogan after this is a TikTok level speech. But it's really just like, hey, he's a bad guy. I'm a good person. Vote. And it, it's I, I, that's all they're offering. And you can't get me to buy that she's a good person just based off of just geography. She's a San Francisco politician. When I go look at San Francisco, that's not what I want for the rest of the I country. Agree more. And so the, the argument that I was making on your show 10 years ago is like, hey, the whole left has been hijacked by San Francisco. These are no longer New York liberals. Trump is a New York liberal. She's a San Francisco liberal. They're revolutionary. And, and this whole, whoever it was earlier got there and said that, you know, Democrats are, it was Kissinger, they're just as patriotic as, as uh, Republicans. I'm like, well, hold on, this party wants to rewrite the Constitution. How, and pack the Supreme Court. Yeah. How, how are they? Well, they hate the country. They yes. degraded the country. They, yeah. they hate its history. They hate its culture. They hate its people. That's why they're replacing them. She was raising money for the people that were burning and looting the country uh, all during the summer of George Floyd and all that uh, other stuff. These, this group hates America, says it, its founding Obviously. was wrong. They've rewritten history. They paid another delusional woman of mixed race heritage. Hannah Nicole Jones or Nicole Hannah Jones from New York to in, to rewrite the entirety of American history backed by the New York Times. The, these aren't accidents. These aren't coincidences. No, Who is Hannah Nicole Jones? Mixed breed, uh, half black, half white woman. What are her credentials? How did she get elected to rewrite the entirety of American history, frame America as founded in racism and it started in 16? She rewrote the, rewrote the whole thing. Who is she? Other than she gets away. It's a black woman. Don't question well, it. Well, she's, a tool. she's a tool of others, of course. You know, so Kamala Harris just said, I could hear my ear, that if elected president, she will secure the border. So, like, imagine the balls required. You know, again, I've told lies, and I'm sure I will again. I try, really try not to, but I'm sure I will be weak and lie about something to somebody at some point. But if I ever told a lie like that that was precisely opposite truth, I mean, I'd be worried about getting struck by lightning or something. A normal person can't lie like that. So I'm going to scare the border. She's the border czar. I'm even open border. Like, what? They have... <laughs> I'm just... I'm literally just thinking this in real time. Politics was a game of football. Contact sport, real consequences. They've turned it into gymnastics. And so there's some judges that we don't really understand, and they score things and say this person was better than that person. And it's very subjective, and and they've that's what this is. It's they're putting on a four day concert tour show. How do we make you feel? She's an attractive woman. She's speaking in complete sentences, and you know this looks better, feels better. All right, guys, let's continue on with Faust. Faust is or Faust. All right, guys, so let's read. Chapter 7, Pride and Prejudice, Jane Austen. Oh, it's a very short chapter, honestly. It's only like three pages, two pages, actually. All right, guys, chapter 
Oh, that's chapter 12. In honor of Bobby, I am announcing tonight that upon my election, I will establish a new independent presidential commission on assassination attempts. And they will be tasked with releasing all of the remaining documents pertaining to the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. And they will also conduct a rigorous review of the attack last month. But I tell you, I have never had more people ask me, please, sir, release the documents on the Kennedy assassination. And we're going to do that. He talked about was having safe food and ending the chronic disease epidemic. Our children are now the unhealthiest, sickest children in the world. Don't you want healthy children? And don't you want the chemicals out of our food? And don't you want the regulatory agencies to be free from corporate corruption? And that's what President Trump told me that he wanted. He also told me that he wanted to end the grip of the neocons on U.S. foreign policy. He said he didn't want any more 200 trillion, a $200 billion wars in Ukraine that we could use that money back here in the United States. And the safest, the, the best way to build a safe America is to rebuild our industrial base and rebuild the middle class in this country. And don't you want a president who's going to get us out of the wars and who's going to rebuild the middle class in this country? And he told me that he wanted to end the censorship because the whole basis of American democracy is the free flow of information. And... We know that a government that can silence its opponents has license for any kind of atrocity. And can you think of any time that you can look back in history and say that the people who were censoring were the good guys? They're always the bad guys. Because it's always the first step down that slippery slope to totalitarianism. And don't you want a president who's going to protect America's freedoms And who is going to protect us against totalitarianism. And I want to ask you again, don't you want a safe environment for your children? Don't you want to, don't you want to know that the food that you're feeding them is not filled with chemicals that are going to give them cancer and chronic disease? And don't you want a president that's going to make America healthy again? Thank you all very, very much, and God bless you, and God bless America.
All right, guys, let's continue on Faust. <clears throat> All right, guys, we're on book five, chapter 22 of The Godfather. I think I'll imagine, I don't know. We'll see how far I get within 10 minutes and if it... Uh... All right, guys, starting a new book, The Myth of Sisyphus. The Myth of Sisyphus. All right, guys, we're uh, on the second part, chapter 22 of The Godfather. Um, yeah, so, well, let's just wait. Fuck. All right, guys, uh, we're on, I kind of like this view, but we're on, we're, blah, blah, blah. all right, guys, we're on chapter 17. Are we on 17? Oh, we're on 17. Thank <laughs> you. 